Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here or if you're not new here, my name is Catherine and I am currently a second year PhD student studying history at The Ohio State University. Okay, so the topic of today's video is all about organizing, planning my life as a PhD student, but first I just wanted to quickly reintroduce or introduce myself for the first time for all of our new friends here on the channel. It is the beginning of a new school year and there are lots of new people on this channel. So like I said, my name is Catherine and I am a cultural historian of war. So my primary interest is on women in France during World War I. To be even more specific, I am researching motherhood in France and possibly Australia during World War I. And I'm here at Ohio State University. I did my master's at New York University. I got an MA in French studies and I have spent lots and lots of time in France. I studied abroad there. I taught English there for a year. I finished my master's part of the program at NYU. We spent a summer um, over there and then I did an internship and then I got a research grant and spent four months there, five months there and was there when the pandemic first began back in 2020. So that is a little bit about me, but I thought today it would be a good time to talk about planning. I struggle with, actually, no, I don't struggle with planning. Let's be honest, I love to plan. I love making lists. I love taking notes. I love writing lots of things down. Sometimes I write too many things down in too many places and I find more joy in doing the planning than doing the work. But here we are. I know not everybody's planning is going to look the same and my way of planning might not work for you, but I wanted to at least share what I do. So first up is a planner. I love having a paper planner. It is one of my favorite things in the world. I've always had paper planners. I've never fully transitioned into anything else and I've barely used anything else besides a paper planner. But last year I got this day designer planner and I know a lot of you also watched Kaylin Apple on the Redhead um, Academic and she also uses day designer I think, but we use different formats. So I like to have a week format where I can see my entire week and the breakdown is by hour. This helps me personally stay the most organized, manage my classes, know when I need to get my readings done, know when I can schedule any meetings. And this is just the layout that I personally prefer. And I have found this to be a really helpful planner. I will say the planner that I have is a year planner, not an academic year which a lot of people prefer the academic year calendar if they're, you know, students getting a graduate degree or something like that. I'm okay that this runs January to December. It does mean that I need to start looking ahead to get my next planner since the end of the year is upon us. We're in the last quarter of the year, which is very crazy. And let's talk about it actually. I'm excited for Christmas. I know that it's only September, but I'm very excited for Christmas. Okay, you know what? Let's not talk about that because I know Christmas is controversial and not everybody likes to celebrate this early. My roommate and I do. But anyways, so I typically use my Sundays and my Wednesdays to do intensive planning. And I do this for two reasons. Sunday because I like to see the week ahead and Wednesday because I have the bulk of my classes on Tuesday and so once Tuesday is over I can start looking ahead for all the readings that I have for the next week so I like to do a lot of heavy planning on those two days and then pretty much I'm set for the rest of the week it's just adding in different uh, meetings or things like that so how do I schedule all of my readings people do this very differently I personally will take a look at my syllabus and after the day of that class, I look at whatever readings I need to do and immediately put in on whatever day I'm going to read them. If I have a class like my class on Empire where there are like six to seven articles that I have to read on a given class day, I like to count the number of pages that I have. This might be weird, but also I know other people who do this, so we'll see. Leave me uh, a comment below if you also like to figure out what the page count is of your readings every week. But so like this week I have a reading by Chatterjee that is 12 pages long, Empires, Nations, Peoples. I have one from Frederick Cooper on globalization, Hopkins, Kramer, Fanon. Anyways, I have all these readings and I will put a video up of what I'm talking about. But next to each reading, I write how many pages this reading is. And this helps me kind of sparse out 
And this kind of helps me separate which days I want to do which articles. I personally can't do all the readings for one class in one day. My brain doesn't work that way. So like for this weekend, I have two readings on Friday, two readings on Saturday, one reading on Sunday, and then Monday, one reading. And I do this for pretty much every single class. If I'm reading a book, I look at how many pages are in the book, and then I separate out how many days I'm going to need to read the book. So this is where the bulk of my planning comes down to. I like to write out the times of my classes and I like to specifically schedule what times I'm going to do what readings. Now this doesn't always happen, but I like to do this because it feels like my day is more like a work day. In grad school, your day can feel very unstructured and you are the person in control of all of your readings, all of your days. I have three days of the week where I don't have any classes and that is a lot of free time and if I don't, specifically schedule out when I'm doing each reading, I am way less likely to be productive in any sense of the manner. So I would suggest, I really like Day Designer. They have a lot of different options where you can do, I'm pretty sure you can even maybe like customize them, but I like the weekly and hourly planner. Now I substitute this with an iCal calendar where I don't put any of my readings or anything like that. I just put my classes and my meetings on there. And I do this for two reasons. A, this is really helpful if a professor needs to plan something with me. I find it way easier than looking in my paper planner. I can just pull up my iCal, look at the day and the hours, and if I can schedule in a meeting anywhere. I also do this so that my mom can see my schedule and that my partner can see my schedule. I am in a long distance relationship and we have our calendars synced up through iCal. That way we know like what the other person is doing, like when we have work, when we have meetings and such, that way we know when to not call the other person essentially. And then also I have my mom who's synced up to my calendar. That way she also knows my schedule and when she can call or cannot call. But I am not one of those people who likes to schedule like all of my readings in my entire day on iCal, but I do find it helpful for at least time blocking classes and meetings. Okay, and for my last piece of organizational advice, how I keep my life together as a PhD student is for note taking and keeping all of that together. I've already done a past video on specifically research papers and how I organize for that. So if you're interested in that, I can leave a link down below. But for my readings, I am someone who likes to take notes on paper, just like I like to have my planner on paper. I find I just remember things so much more when I'm actually writing them down. Same goes for note taking. I am really in love with the Moleskin X, XL, XXL, maybe XL notebooks. They are college line, there's lots of room, and I've been using these for a few years now in both my MA and now my PhD program. I also have these like tiny notebooks this year that are a bit smaller, but still have that same kind of college rule line. I find this to be just so much of a better way to take notes. And nowadays some professors don't allow you to have a computer in the classroom. That being said, I have started using Microsoft OneNote. If any of you saw my video this summer for my preparing for generals video, I'm using Microsoft OneNote to take notes for any book that is related to generals. I would also suggest using this if you have any books for your dissertation or a future project. This keeps it, all of my notes in the same exact format. So I have a template that I use that lines out the keywords, key concepts, the main argument, uh, and then I take my notes for each chapter or each section. And A, this keeps everything super streamlined and I'm analyzing the books in the same way. B, it keeps me very organized. That way I have all my notebooks set up in this database for my minor field, for my major field, for my independent study, which is directly going over books for my major field. And I have just found this to be a super helpful way to keep all my notes together. I know other people use databases like Zotero or OneNote. I do use Zotero for like research papers, but I found that Microsoft OneNote has just been the best service for me thus far in my process of slowly getting ready for generals. So those are kind of the three ways that I keep my life very organized, my paper day designer planner, my iCal, my Microsoft OneNote. I do wanna mention one last service that I found helpful last year, but then this summer I kind of stopped using it and that is Notion. I'm sure you guys have heard it 
talked about loads of times. I'm gonna mention her for another shout out once again, Kaylin Apple, the redhead academic. If you go to her website, she has lots of different Notion templates, or I, she used to, I'm not sure if she still does, but she's also done many videos on how she sets up her Notion, and I used a lot of her templates, templates to get my life together. And last year I found it helpful in terms of just kind of general life planning and life goals, but I was not able to successfully implement that into my day-to-day -day life, nor was I able to completely grasp a hold onto it for organizing my research. But I do think it is really helpful. I think it's just that, again, problem of I like to have everything written down and I find it hard to transition into adding in another thing into my life but I do still have it. I do still check on it and use it, just not as a daily thing. And I don't keep up with it as much as I did last year, but it's another great organizing service. And there are plenty of other videos out there on YouTube if you are interested in using Notion. But this is how I plan my life. This is how I keep everything together. Um, not really emotionally, but just strategically in my head. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope your school years are getting off to a great start. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section and make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already to keep seeing grad school content and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye.